welcome to the channel. I'm sure you can tell by the title that this is about my 335i that I have listed for sale. So the reason I'm going about it this way is because no matter how many pictures I post, people want to see more pictures than even videos of the car. So I figured this would be the best way to get that out to people that really want to see it without them actually seeing it in person. So if after the video you are interested in the car and you do want to see the car in person, test drive it, check it out and consider buying it, then please DM or email me and I'll try my best to get back to you as soon as possible. And so long as I have the car, I will upload N54 content and 335i content as I do do a lot with the car while I have it. So once the car is sold, it'll be more about my Supra and other cars that belong to some close friends of mine as I'm a part of those builds as well. And I think it'll be interesting for people to see what goes into our build. So my Supra, RX-7, and if you're interested in some diesel stuff, I have a 6.7 Cummins. So that'll also be something that I can include in the channel as well. So let me know if that's something you wanna see. And until then, we'll just focus on the BMW and it'll be a walk around. I'm just gonna do a quick walk around cover interior exterior mods and maintenance and a startup i don't know that i'll be able to drive it because i'm trying to keep this short and sweet so let me know what you think and if you want to see more of that other stuff as well consider liking and subscribing to the channel so you can see more of that stuff when i do upload it and i guess we can go over the exterior of the car since that's what we're looking at right now it's a m3 replica front bumper with a m3 gts style lip so yeah it's a replica bumper because the m3 bumper does not fit a 335i and the lip is actually for a real M3 bumper. So I don't know how far off they are on the bottom, but this lip fits halfway decent. It works for me. I'm sure it'll work for anybody interested in the car. The side skirts has M3 style side skirts. And then moving along to the rear has the high kick rear spoiler that it's your typical 335, 335i spoiler. And then I got a M Tech rear bumper with a Rieger quad diffuser. I think it looks better. I've never been a fan of the dual tip. Kind of like the quad tip setup better has the lci tail lights with the leds again they look better especially at night yeah as far as paint the paint on the car is good the car is clean yeah it has a few dings and light scratches here and there it's a daily driver the front lip is chipped up a little bit on the bottom i mean that's just to be expected with a car that sits this low and gets daily driven i drive the car for the most part every day lately i haven't been driving it as much but for the past two years it's been driven almost every day now the car does have gloss black kidney grills, the gloss black front lip, gloss black uh, mirror caps. It has uh, the satin black apex wheels and the gloss black rear diffuser. So we're going to the wheel specs. They're 18 by nine apex ARC eight wheels with a plus 30 offset and extended studs because I did not like the wheel bolts that are commonly used on factory BMWs, Audis, Volkswagens, etc. The rears are 18 by nine and a half plus 35 with a five millimeter spacer and for rubber we got federal rsr tires up front in a 255 35 and in the rear we'll get the r888s 265 35 18 and i mean there's still some tread left on them as far as driving in the rain with these they're not bad i don't know what people plan to do in the rain i don't know if they're trying to take corners i don't know what i don't know how aggressive they're trying to drive but for me daily driving these tires are not a issue in the rain they're not The only downside of these tires is they're noisy. That's the only thing I can say, especially the rears. But that's to be expected with a tire, you know, of that sort. You're not going to get an ARC AAA to be quiet. They might not be obnoxiously loud like a mud tire, but they're still going to generate some noise. And to some people, that might be a problem. To me, it was not that big of an issue. So it was get traction and get it for a good price. Because if you get a Continental or a Michelin tire, sure, it's going to be quiet. It's going to be softer. It's going to be a better ride. But you're also going to be not getting as much traction and you're going to be spending double the money probably so i'll grab the keys and we can go ahead and get inside this thing so as far as interior goes it's a black leather car it's a weather floor mat so it's you got the rubber mat there rubber mats in the rear one of my favorite parts of this interior is actually this steering wheel i do not like the oem 335i steering wheel it there was just something special about it and for me personally when you when you're in a car and you're driving a car the interior of the car is what you see that's everything you can't see the exterior when you're driving so for me it was just as important to have a nice interior as it was exterior so this steering wheel was a big selling point for me as a buyer when i bought the car and a lot of people have complimented the wheel so apparently it's a big wheel big deal to a lot of other people so other parts of the interior are just uh Alcantara shift boot, the ZHP weighted shift knob, 
it does make the shifter sit a little bit shorter which i do like a lot um this ecs boost gauge here it's white obviously when the when there's no uh, power to it when you turn the lights on it turns amber so it matches the gauge is just fine this is just a tablet for me to data log and view certain things on my jb4 the car is currently tuned on jb4 and mhd so somebody wants to buy it and they're not in the jb4 that's completely up to them they could take the box out sell it go full mhd but as of right now the car does have jb4 and mhd and i personally like it that way the setup has been on the car for about two years now so i feel like that that's proven enough for me personally so we can go uh over the i guess we can go over the engine mods it's obviously that's important engine mods and maintenance car has we'll start off with uh i guess the maintenance has index 12 injectors bmw replacement high pressure fuel pump has a precision raceworks stage 2 low pressure fuel pump has the oil filter housing gasket done it has all the vacuum lines replaced with this uh, silicone vacuum line it also has the belts and pulleys and tension are all replaced it had the rear main seal done when the clutch was done it's a 335 is clutch with a m factory single mass lightweight flywheel so that's a plus for anybody buying it because if you ever have to service the clutch to replace it, you can service this flywheel. You don't have to replace the entire flywheel. With the factory one, it's a dual mass flywheel. When it wears out, you're, you're shit out of luck. You have to replace the entire flywheel. This one can be resurfaced like any regular flywheel. So that's a big plus. The 335 IS clutch does engage nice, smooth, super easy to drive. As far as uh, mods performance, it does have Cobb charge pipe, MMP inlets, it has this BMS slash Mishimoto catch can with the push lock style hoses. It's cool packs are done, has NGK plugs, has the VRSF downpipes, has a VRSF intercooler. And I believe that's honestly it as far as performance. There's not anything crazy done to the car. The car runs good, so there was no reason for me. I wasn't looking to make crazy power, so there was no reason for me to actually throw anything else at it. The most it would have got would have been a single turbo had these turbos failed. But since these turbos still be still work good, they still perform correctly, they spool quick, and they hold boost perfectly fine, that was fine for me. It, it did get a walnut blast this past year. I did that myself. Shit. Had a walnut blast this past year. I did that myself. Along with that, I had new intake manifold gaskets, the O-rings, charge pipe O-ring, and throttle body gasket. I think that's about it for that. I could be missing stuff. I didn't go over suspension, though. It does have H&R lowering springs. So as you can see from this angle, the car does sit nice, does have a nice ride height to it. I personally love the stance. The ride quality is great. It's not stiff enough, but for a daily driver, it was great. It wasn't jarring, it wasn't bumpy, it was smooth, but when I say it's not stiff enough, I mean in terms of performance. It just was not as stiff as I would have liked the car to be. It does have M3 control arms, M3 front and rear sway bars, which obviously I can't show you. It does have dine-in camber plates, which you can barely see those. So camber adjustment, and it does have M3 thr thrust arms as well. But with that being said, we'll go ahead and give the car a startup so you guys can hear what the car sounds like. There's a lot of guys out there on bikes today. It's 60 degrees or 67 degrees out here today in Delaware. It's not the normal temps for Delaware, but it's great, man. It's great. Here we go. Does have a TPMS light on and it does have a 
triangle notification for the LCI tail lights and for obviously the TPMS light. But as you can see, the car is quieter now. RPMs are up, and I'll even go ahead and turn this on. What the hell is this? See if it'll even connect. Probably won't connect. Probably got a log out of it. There we go. I don't know why I was acting like that, but yeah. So you see, these are the basic gauges that I would actually pay attention to whenever I was doing any data logging. Will be obviously AFR, low pressure fuel pump, high pressure fuel pump, oil temps, and IATs. The only codes that pop up are catalyst downpipe codes. And that's because I don't have them. Uh, I don't have the diagnostic for that turned off. I mean, as you can see, it's catalyst downpipes, catalyst downpipes, catalyst downpipes, catalyst. And we can go back to April 2019. What are we at now? March 2019. We can keep going all the way back. January 26, 2018. So, like, I mean, being realistic, this car gives those catalyst downpipe codes. I guess I should have just had to delete it, but yeah. So, that's it. That's the car. It does have 123K on it. Like I said, the car runs good. If you do buy one with 70, 80K, it's very rare that they're going to have certain maintenance items replaced. Not saying it's a bad idea to buy a low mileage car or that it's a better idea to buy a high mileage car. But just know that's something that you got to keep in mind. Because usually when you do buy a lower mileage car, the car is going to net a higher value. So you're already paying more for that car that's had less maintenance done. The motor itself is not an issue. The transmission itself is not an issue. And neither is the rear. Your stuff like fuel pumps, vacuum lines, certain sensors, O2 sensors, those are things that are going to fail. Water pump. Water pump was done on this car. Thermostat was done on this car. And all these things I do have email receipts or maintenance records for. So injectors, fuel pumps, and a few other items I do have maintenance records for. The rest of it I do have email receipts for. So there is proof that these mods are done and that I did them either myself or a dealership had done them. So that's another thing. If you buy one that has not had the maintenance done, just keep that in mind. You're going to spend a few thousand dollars for maintenance. So it's nice to have the lower miles, but just, that's just something you can't, you got to think about. So yes, the car does have 123K on it. I know that's a little more than some people want on their BMWs, but it's a solid car. Maintenance was done. I, you know, I wouldn't hesitate to drive this car anywhere. So if you're interested, definitely hit me up. Give me a call. I'll have my, well, not a call, but I'll have my email in the description. And you can email me if you're interested in a car. And if you found this link through a Facebook ad, well, here you go. I don't really know what else you would need. This is, this is it. This is what you wanted. This is what you got. Thank you. Hope you guys have a good day and hope you guys are having a good new year.